Hang on a sec. I think... Uh, there we go. Go for it, bro. Hello. 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 Here we are. Yes. The UTG <laughs> Show, episode yes. number one. Welcome. You asked for it, so uh, we're, we're taking our Saturday mornings to do it. If there isn't anything more committed than that, I do not know. I agree so, with that. I agree with that. I agree, <laughs> I agree with that. I agree with that. <laughs> I had a late, late, late night last night, but here, here we are. We, sh we show up. We show up. So, um, yeah, this is a very casual very casual episode between ads and I. We're just going to talk a few things. There's always things that we get asked inside the Discord or online through emails um, that, you know, sometimes people might miss. Uh, so we're going to we're gonna give you some handy trading tips today. So stick around. Uh, if you're a new participant into this market or even a more experienced one, even myself as an experienced trader, I've learned quite a bit about myself and my trading in the last nine days. It's the 9th of January, 2021. Um, so we're going to share some tips with you today and we're just going to talk about the market in general. We're going to do a quick market overview, talk about things that are happening at the moment and uh, just have some fun. Let's have some fun. Let's keep things very casual uh, for everything that we do here <laughs> at UTG. Go to unitytradinggroup.com. If you haven't met us before, welcome. I'm Tex. This is my PIC ads. We are Unity Trading Group. Uh, if you go to the website as well, unitytradinggroup.com, and if ads scrolls down a little bit, we have some really, really handy guides on the website. We've got these trading cheat sheets you can see on the screen there now as well. Uh, a lot of pennants and bull flags and triangle formations are appearing in this market across many, many different coins. So Get your hands on those trading cheat sheets, uh, stick them up at your trading desk there and you will see a lot of those in the market at the moment, particularly things like bullish and bearish <clears throat> divergence, a really, really handy little tool. All of our indicators, guides, everything, our podcast is over there at unitytradinggroup.com. So without further ado, I think we should get into it. Let's have a look at this market. We're going to have a look at some of the biggest news going around at the moment. We're also going to dive into the Grayscale Trust and talk about that, some of the buy-ups they've been making as of late, some of the sells they've been making as of late. We're going to talk about XRP and the SEC investigation as well. We're going to talk about the Biden stimulus package that's alleged to uh, be going out around $3 trillion shortly as of um, yesterday, I think it was, it was announced. And a couple other things as well. And then we're going to get into some tips and tricks to help you become a better, smarter crypto and market trader. Ads, take it away. Let's get into this. I think we go to coin market cap. Some really big news over the last few days is that we finally, we came close in 2017, <clears throat> but we finally cracked that trillion yeah. dollar market cap huge for uh for cryptocurrency i think that was yesterday morning or the morning before we've since uh taken it up to a thousand a trillion and 62 million now as well so this this is the push that we we spoke about this for ages back in 2017 where people said you know the run from 2017 will never happen and retail interest isn't going to be the one to drive this well whether it be retail or institutional institutionally driven or not this liquidity injection is exactly what you need in a bullish market yeah. for things to be able to increase in price in the way that we've seen this you know we see it go to bitcoin then it goes to the other majors we, we've spoken about this so many times it's a trickle down effect btc is the one that sees the yields of the biggest volume injection then it trickles down to the other majors f whether it be xrp bnb stellar um mostly the usd pairs to begin with ada exactly right and then when people start taking profit we get that sort of alt season that people talk about where they're traditionally talking about the BTC pairs where people will trade the, the BTC pairs to accumulate more sats to put back into Bitcoin. And then the sort of the cycle starts to repeat. But yeah, at the moment, the USD pairs are seeing the lion's share of the, um, the, the boom at the moment. Yeah. It's more, more so to be, to be fair with BTC because it is, you know, backed against or, or based against the USD. It's going to drag everything up with it. Just like I say, every, <laughs> Every update, if you're looking at BTC yep. in general, where where you can gauge the you know the, the overall direction of BTC, yeah, um, and then it comes down to like you said, it does trickle down to the other pairs, being USD pairs primarily, and then it literally yep. picks them up and drags them up with it. Although you yep. don't get the amount of uh, you know flurry or the amount of um, you know you know fireworks that you get with BTC, but there could be more money to be made on those uh those other coins than there is btc at the moment if you're trading for example spot yeah 100 percent. and we we spoke about this a few weeks ago and i think it's really important to reiterate that again that you know for people coming into this market whether it be you listening to this now or people that you know you know i'm 
I've continually tried to do this, but I'm always trying to get my family to uh, to invest into to cryptocurrency. They still don't see it the way that it is. But even if people see Bitcoin price and they go, holy shit, 40 grand, like I don't have that type of money to put into BTC. I'll never own a whole Bitcoin. It's like, well, that may be the case, but there's other coins out there that, like XRP, for example, that sit, yeah, yes, it's there's, there's a far higher um, circulating supply of those particular coins, but we've seen what could happen in the last few days on a coin like XRP, which is 31 cents, or Ethereum, which is 1200 bucks, or Litecoin at 172, Cardano at, uh, at 29 cents, Polkadot, where, where, the, where the fuck did that come from? I've never, <laughs> I've, I've not even traded that before. What is Polkadot? Dot? Okay. You should ask Fergs uh, about Polkadot, mate. <laughs> Fergs, he knows everything. <laughs> 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 yeah, so you know there are there are mountains of money to be made with the right trading strategy far beyond that of of Bitcoin. So don't get discouraged if you see Bitcoin or Ethereum running or whatever it is. Like, who cares? There are thousands of coins. Most of them are absolute shit. But if you look at the the top, you know, the, the I'd say probably the top. 30 maybe depending on your trading experience if you're a very new participant to this market and the top the top 10 to 15 i would say is probably where you should maybe keep your attention um you know there is certainly money to be made and as ad said bitcoin the usd pair is is dragging everything else up with it so you know it, it's almost like throwing a dart at the moment yeah look to just just to give you an idea we don't even have to leave this page to really see my point so yeah. if we're looking at btc 39 percent over the last seven days averaged out that's fine but if you look at the next one down eth you're looking at a double nearly double that at 69 67 and then you yeah. come down the list you look at cardano that's at 70 it's and then you stellar. come down and look at stella you look at 124 <laughs> and then you know the list goes on you you, you can find this same you know this this same pattern repeating as as you scroll down the list, like Maker, 77. Uh, then you look at, you know, uh, SOL, 80%. It's, if you're not in BTC, there's still a lot of opportunities out there. And, totally. And for me, it, it would be these opportunities that make money as yeah. opposed to being solely exposed to BTC. 100%. And I think it's always wise, you know, to have, uh, whether it be a small or otherwise allocation of, of BTC sort of sitting there because of the hype that surrounds that and the bullishness in, in BTC, you know, that it's not going to, it's not going to crash anytime soon, particularly with the, um, the massive institutional investment that we're seeing at the moment. But, you know, Grayscale, for example, are buying a hell of a lot of Bitcoin uh, BSV, they're buying Bitcoin, they're buying Ethereum, they're buying Litecoin, that, that you know, Bitcoin's only one one part of the pie for them. So, you know, yeah. for myself, my primary focus now is the likes of Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, Cardano, Bitcoin Cash. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm in a position where I could, I could trade Bitcoin if I wanted to solely, but there's there's still money to be able to, to be made in these other ones. So just wanted to, to sort of put that out there for people that ask all the time, oh, I've missed the run. I, I get so emotionally discouraged and that's a very very easy thing to do don't let this market get you down or put you in a negative trading mindset because if you get discouraged because you missed a run on a coin or whatever it is it puts you in a funk and then you just you can't trade other things um neutrally without having that negative trading bias or whatever it is this trading is a means to build wealth it's not the trade that the primary means of of building your wealth so if you miss a if you miss a run who cares like there are plenty of other trading opportunities to be had so don't get discouraged yeah and just adding to that like i said in the past it's not about it's not solely about the price of the asset no it's more so the percentage that you make on the asset so if you're buying Cardano, for example, you care about the 69% gain that you're making as opposed to what Cardano is actually worth. So that, that same mentality I bring over to BTC, whether it's $1,000 or $5,000 or $40,000, it's irrelevant. Mm. It's really just the percentage difference between when you buy and when you sell. But I've said that many, many times on many different occasions. Um, so look, that still holds true today and uh, I stand by that. And that's all you should care about. Mm. Because at the end of the day, for example, if you're trading uh, an asset like Euro, for example, <clears throat> you couldn't give two, two bobs about what Euro is actually worth. You mm. just care about when you bought it, when you sell it, and the percentage difference between those two numbers. 
Yeah, exactly right. All right, without further ado, let's get into the market and have a look and see what is going on with some of these majors. Bitcoin, as you can see there, overnight, 2.87% gain. Um, I, I would just, as ADS brings this up, I would just say coin market cap is a resource but it's not the resource so uh, a, a lot of things that you see on coin market tap um uh, are in the range but don't take it with a grain of salt so all right looking at uh, at btc here here we are now so we can see uh, we've got our, our gravy train indicator up on the screen and to all you boys uh, massive shout out to to you guys who have been helping us out uh, we've had some some really really great feedback. This is our gravy train indicator. We've we've not released this as of yet. We've got a a pretty tight beta group at the moment testing this, uh, and the feedback has been absolutely incredible. You can see it on the screen. I mean, come on, this is uh, this is last night. Someone called it the holy grail of of indicators, which was which was a very nice compliment. Um, we're not saying that, but it's it's a great indicator. So here we are now. So we can see this this run all the way from it isn't it? It's it's crazy to say this. The run from twenty k up mm. to 40k uh was called the whole way by by gravy train and here we are now we had that small consolidation off that sort of weakish supply zone because it was a pivot in the market um we I, I almost thought yesterday that we would get another sort of move down towards that supply zone after we filled that gap um we, I, I was borderline expecting 24k on the cards to fill that second CME gap after we filled that one at around 27 or 28. I think it was. There was another one left behind at around 24, which is yet to be filled. Uh, so we've continued to run from here, and yeah. the, the the pattern is very similar. You know, people are of that mind where they're saying, "Well, where can this stop? Where can this stop?" And I, I am in the exact same boat. Where the hell can this stop? But we seem to have these moves where we just we come up we sort of we flutter we we pivot we pivot we up we up we up and then we might have a a move back down to to a certain point and everyone i almost did the same thing around here i'm not gonna lie i was like holy shit like how much further are we going down because because all the beat the all the usd pairs were were moving at the same time um mm. i made a silly mistake and sold out of a position a little bit too early i was lucky to counter that with some other buys for a dollar cost averaging uh, strategy that we'll talk about in a moment that saved me i'll, I'll, I'll openly admit that that. But here we are now, the 61.8 extension. We know it's a pretty important level for BTC, uh, for, for Fibonacci sort of extension levels. We breached past that previous high where people thought we might have a double top at around that 34K level, but uh, BTC didn't want a bar of it. And then here we are now sitting at around the 41K level ads, just uh, shy of 42 where we hit beforehand. I think we need to draw in the trend-based Fibonacci if we do close above this 61.8 to see where we're going to go again. Totally. Mm. Um, but in any case, uh, it looks like we probably will. There's 43 minutes left in this candle, so it's going to be interesting to see if we do if, or if we push down and you know hold underneath the 61.8 extension. <clears throat> but primarily, that's what I'd be looking at. Uh, looking at something... All I'm doing is, if you've been watching the videos over the course of the week, all I've been doing really is um, looking at these fib levels and waiting for closes or you know below or above and then you know trying to you know gauge the next relevant level of course above or below where we are now uh, i don't have a relevant level above i will add one in <clears throat> but if we are moving towards the downside if we do continue downwards as we are uh, have here uh if we do get a close below that's remain that remains to be seen over the next 40 minutes or so or even the next few candles of the day if we are to see something, it would be the negative 27, which does coincide nicely, I would think, with a very short-term level of uh, demand there, Ty, I think. Uh, if we do get something pending that, the double zero, the 35K mark would be where I would pick it. Um, that really coincides nicely with our gravy train, which we have a flat cloud forming around that level too. <clears throat> Yep, I love that. Um, I think maybe it could be a good time if we wanted to to just do a very quick uh, how-to on the the trend-based fib extension. If, uh, if we want to spend a few minutes on that, yeah, we can do that. Um, Let's do that. We can kill two birds with one stone. So if we bring up a fresh chart, so the the 
for, for those of you who trade with Fibonacci, which ads and I do very, very heavily, we know that the Fibonacci retracement tool, if you go to the left-hand side there on TradingView, there are two Fibonacci tools. There is the Fib retracement, which you can see that we've got starred there, of course, uh, and then the trend-based Fib extension. So the Fib retracement tool, which ads will draw on the screen and give you an example of, if things are in a bullish uptrend or things are in an uptrend, we're looking for retracement levels. We're looking for pullback levels. And you can see how well those have been respected there. So I'll give you an example as we play here. Exactly right. Yeah, what ads has done here. So we can see that when we've hit a previous hot, because what we're doing with the Fib retracement is we're drawing it from a swing low when we're in an uptrend to a swing high. And then what we are doing is we are looking for retracement levels or pullback levels, where if we think that the asset is going to continue in an uptrend, we are looking for levels where the asset will pull back, where we can open an order or place a buy and wait for the level or wait for the price to continue upwards. So that's the FIB retracement tool. And you can see that the, these particular levels, the 38, the 50, the 61, the 78, you can see how well these are respected. And with the Fibonacci retracement tool, the, I guess that the psychological level where a lot of people are looking for pullbacks or looking for areas of consolidation before the continued run up is what's called this golden pocket. And that's between the 50 and the 61. The 50 really is a bit of a psychological zone, I guess, because the the, the, the thought process is if we are trending above the 50, uh, we know that there's a good chance that we're going to continue upwards. If we do come back down below and we break below the 50 or the 61, we know that's a pretty good sign that potentially uh, this run may be over. And then we're going to look for retracements uh, back down to towards you know, A, the scene of the crime, as our friend David Modell says, the pace where things consolidated or started before the original run up uh, or back down between uh, these sort of these previous high levels. So if you want to know more about that, you can go to unitytradinggroup.com forward slash Fibonacci. We have a, a whole guide there and a whole video on how to use the retracement tool. But on the other side of things ads is what's called the trend based Fibonacci extension. And if you've been watching our videos here at UTG or our daily updates, you've seen that we've relied heavily on this. Uh, why? Because while well, Bitcoin is in a level of what's called price discovery, there is no previous trends or data looking left. There is no level where Bitcoin has been this uh, like this beforehand. So you need to be able to see, I guess, levels in the future where Bitcoin might hit and pull back. Uh, or levels where you can either A, take profit or uh, look to, to short a particular area. And you can see here, we've just drawn this in just now and we'll explain how to do it in a moment. And you can see the accuracy of these levels is is pretty stupid, to be honest. So this is available on TradingView. Um, so what it's done, it, it, it tracks a price primary moves and its retracement. So the resulting price levels are drawn on the chart represent potential support and resistance in these moves. So that's a very good way of putting it. You look for these levels as uh, either A, resistance levels, or B, support levels, depending on whether we are in an uptrend or a downtrend. And the Fibonacci extension tool is also used in conjunction with uh, with Elliott Waves and, and a few other things as well, Wyckoff. Uh, but we won't get into that. If you want to know more about Wyckoff, you can go to unitytradinggroup.com forward slash Wyckoff videos, guys, there and everything. All right, so ads, let's talk about how we would use this Fib extension tool, particularly with Bitcoin, and it's, it's more relevant than ever. <clears throat> Uh, than what it is now because we have no history to tell us where Bitcoin might roll from here. So this is a really, really great tool for that. It is. And uh, unlike the, um, the the retracement tool, it's it's a price discovery tool. So if we don't have any prior data to the left-hand side to really draw support resistance, supply or demand or anything like that, we can use it to gauge price action to the upside and where that upside potential will be or you know, where we can find further resistance to the upside. So there's always ways to look at where price will go eventually. And the way we draw it in is exactly the way I have. We look for the nearest swing low, and then we draw it to the, to the swing high, and then we look for the retracement to give us that third level that we draw in. So one, two, and then three down to here, looking at the price action to do that. And of course, it will display all of the levels above us and of course below the price action as well if we're in a similar situation to we, what we are now. Now what I'll do is I'll bring up our settings and you can uh, watch this video back and you can pause it and you can uh, you can view those settings or copy those. <clears throat> but 
Uh, in any case, if we are, like I said earlier, if we are to move to the upside, break this 41, uh, 41,384, uh, you know, going off these fibs, and the fibs have been respected quite nicely as we can see the price action to the left of us. And of course, this candle uh, currently respecting the 786, if we are to see this movement to the upside over the course of the next few hours to tonight, we could expect it to head up to 44,876 at 1272. That's the next major Fibonacci uh, extension or Fibonacci trend based Fibonacci level that we've got to the upside. So it's very easy to use, basically swing low, swing high to the pullback and we look for the levels above us or below us for support or resistance tie. Yeah, and people people might be saying if you're unaware of you know using this or whatever, they'd say, well, if you're talking about swing lows and swing highs, then why wouldn't it be this one and then this one and this one? What you're looking for is you're looking for significant swing lows and significant swing highs. You don't want to do these sort of intermediate uh, consolidation levels. You want to look for these big bad boys where we've had a, a decent pullback because we know that's a significant level that we now need to break in order to uh, to continue this this bullish sentiment or this bullish uptrend. And you can see again here where the, uh, the, the the 50 fib was significant and the, the 61 fib was significant as well. So we know that when we get past these sort of psychological levels or these previous high levels, uh, the, the next sort of significant levels that we often find, um, yes, it, it's, the, it's the one level, but these levels are often pretty significant and particularly this 1618 extension. When we previously had our fib extension tool drawn on BTC back down at the sort of the 20K level, that 168 was just a huge barrier for, for BTC where we broke above, we, we came back down, we retested, we consolidated. And the same again for the 1272. This is significant in uh, in the, the Elliott Wave sort of world, but for what we find in price discovery, at least from my own experience, that 1618 is a very significant level. We uh, we actually ran out of FIP extension numbers on the, the previous yeah. Bitcoin uh, TA that we did using this particular tool. So the, the key is to find the significant swing lows and the significant swing highs. So then pre, then obviously it displays all those price levels. Uh, the Again, the 50, the 61.8, similar to the retracement tools are pretty important as well. Um, and uh, and yeah, it's just it's a very very handy tool. There isn't really a great deal more to tell about that because it's it's quite a simple tool in its uh, in, in its essence. One really good thing to do is if you want to put on Unicon ads. Um, a, a very good thing to do is, 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 in my opinion, use this with a, a moving average tool. So on the screen here now, we've got Unicon, which one of which was one of our custom indicators. Uh, you know that when sort of price consolidates in this this cradle sort of level, uh, it's uh, it's a pretty powerful uh, reversal signal as well. And you may be a breakout trader, or you may be a pattern trader, depending on how you're looking at this as well. Uh, and when we are pulling back into these significant levels, the 38, the 50, you can gauge the strength of those pullbacks, whether they are significant or whether they're just going to be small consolidations before a continued move to the upside by using something like your moving average to see if we are still in a, a short term uptrend or whether your, your moving averages have crossed and we may be indeed heading back down towards the uh, the original wick down in price. So yeah, that's the Fibonacci extension tool, really simple to use. Uh, even if you use it in conjunction with something like steamroller ads if we bring that up on the screen you know when we are having pullbacks into these significant levels are we at a level where steamroller or your oscillators are telling you that uh, we may be ready for another move up are we going to be pulling back at these particular levels uh, is our cci or rsi telling us uh, other things we've got a little bit of divergence there you know use that uh, with, with your own oscillators and, and apply that to your own trading strategy. But for a lot of these altcoin pairs, whether it be LTC, F, that are heading towards levels uh, where they're unseen before F more so, this is a really, really great tool. Um, just to answer the question that's come through, uh, usually focusing on the 61 and the 50 on Fibonacci, is there, is there an equivalent on this one? Um, <clears throat> if you're, for example, on the, the, the Fibonacci retracement tool, you'd really be focusing on the 38, 50, 61 for those, those three key levels are really gonna give you the best results if you're looking for you know further movement to the upside. With the trend-based Fibs, it's really about price discovery. It's really about looking at price above you to see where it would go because you don't have any data to look for. You don't have any left-hand data to, to really gauge where that's going to be. 
So it's really got a different purpose. If we're looking at retracements um, or you know buying opportunities for this, you probably wouldn't have this on the chart. You'd be looking at swing low to swing high and you'd be looking at the 38, the 50 and the 61 on the way down to really gauge if you're going to continue up. This is really for, like it can be used that way. Uh, it can be, you know, you can put the, the, the orders on the 61, the 50 and the 38. Of course, it can be used in the same sort of regard, but the levels aren't going to be in exactly the same spot. Um, and you're probably going to get a little bit of a different answer every time you draw it. <clears throat> but you can use it in that way. However, it's more suited for price discovery and where we're going to go apart, like above this in terms of higher highs and, and price action that way. Yeah, nothing is ever exact. You know, we, as we always say, we're using these tools to to gauge areas of interest, not exact levels. And then when you can use it in conjunction with something like supply and demand, or your oscillators, or your moving averages, for example, yeah, you know, just you, you, you're you're painting a narrative, or you're, you're creating a narrative based on on what those oscillators and and everything is telling you to confirm a bias. Correcto. BEA beautiful. All right, let's get into Ethereum now and have a look at that. Uh, very quickly heading towards an all-time high level on Ethereum. Uh, the rocket ship is well and truly fueled and on its way. Looking like we're definitely consolidating at the moment. Uh, again, our fib retracement tools, we drew that to the, uh, the 27 extension. And this is why even though as powerful as it is when we don't have predefined levels, uh, we gauge these as areas of interest where we wick down. It's not an exact uh, level, but it's, it's very, very close. So it looks like we're sort of consolidating between this level here. We hit this top supply in that 27 extension almost to the dollar. Uh, and we're sort of ping-ponging between here at, at the moment ads. We are. And um, the thing that really stands out to me is this broken level of supply here. We have well and truly destroyed this level. We've we've gotten rid of the shorters at that level. And of course we are, uh, I'm eager to, to get that off the chart. Uh, if I were to be looking at Ethereum in terms of the upside potential, like I said this week, uh, in some of the updates, I'd be looking towards that 1347 mark, which is our next level of, um, of supply in terms of the, the majors. If we're looking at a daily, uh, if I bring it back, scroll back, forever that's our next major swing high in terms of a market pivot point we've got that massive pivot point that was terrible we've got the massive pivot point up here so that forms our highest or most or the sorry the highest level of supply that we uh that we can really get the highest quality so price is going to be a magnet in that area so i do expect it to get there 13 13 50 pretty much for Ethereum as the, as the next step. Uh, we might fluff around for a bit, however, but it looks like uh, we're holding this 1150 area nicely. We have bounced off this level of demand for you know quite some time now. It looks like we have uh, gotten rid of that, so the next one will be down here, and of course we have held that area too. So looking like a movement to the upside is probably on the cards for Ethereum uh, for the immediate term, I think at least till 1350 until we get a, a major decision at that highest quality level uh, up there. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And I think what is wise at the moment, and this will probably lead us to our next point after we take a look at some of these pairs here is a dollar cost averaging strategy because mm -hmm. we are getting these pretty volatile movements uh, on ETH at the moment. That was a, an almost a $2,000 swing between uh, 1080 and 1280. So there's some still some good pickup opportunities on the way up towards uh, this next supply zone. So yeah, I totally agree with everything that uh, that ads are saying. They're still very much in, a, in an overall macro uptrend on, on ETH and it's providing some good short-term trading opportunities. In the next 24 hours, or probably likely today, a little bit later on, uh, we'll be releasing the guide actually it'll probably be tomorrow the guide on finding your trader type we're talking about reversal trading talking about trend trading day trading swing trading scalping and some strategies for you as well on how you can utilize these swings in a market to us uh, to still make dollars or make sats even in an uptrend when things are moving as quick as what they are here with ethereum all right next let's get into xrp usd uh, has been admittedly kind to me as of late. I'm not much of an XRP trader, but when the opportunity was there, and I'm just going to get you to zoom out to the daily timeframe ads on that one as well and bang Unicon on there. 
I'm going to talk about uh, something very quick. Unicorn is our, our custom trading indicator. You can see the uh, the accuracy of it here on XRP on the daily is pretty stupid. And then when you pair that again with things like Steam Roller, uh, my entry was down at 20, uh, 26 cents flat. Uh, where I was, at, I managed to, to to get that swing up towards that supply zone. We're now sort of teetering in the center here, but daily time frames. Uh, I can't help but think that this looks this looks pretty decent on the daily time frame at the moment. It does, it does, and you know, Steamroll is a testament to that, um, a testament to that swing trader's dream, really, isn't it? Um, because yeah. we've we've had uh, this top here, which was called you know just a couple of days afterwards on Steamroller, which is nice, and of course we've had. That second uh, sort of entry or that second sort of signal coming up on Steamroller for you know the entry into XRP, which happened uh, here, which was basically midway through uh, the uh, the accumulation down here at about twenty cents. So that's where personally I uh, made a buy for XRP and reaping the rewards for that, of course. Um, but looking, going, zooming in a little bit more, we've got some levels that we need to break for XRP. Um, and that's the first one being this this swing uh, high here, of course, this level of supply where we've got this market pivot point. Of course, we've pivoted down here. We've made the major pivot there and, of course, come down to um, give, give us that accumulation, you know, between 26-ish and around 20 cents, which formed that level of demand as well, which we never retested after giving, ma making that zone and, of course, getting the first uh, touchdown at 19 uh, straight after pretty much. But uh, if I take a breath, we're looking at this level here, which is around that 36 cent mark. If we do get a movement to the upside, which is probably going to be the case if we're looking at the macro scale of things on a daily, uh, more than likely we will continue upwards towards that 47 mark, which will be a decent, decent swing if we're looking at you know, the steamroller uh, macro scale where we were averaging in roughly around this 20 cent mark to sell around 48 cents, that would be on a hundred, nearly 100% or pretty much 100% swing trade there and only taking a couple of days if we do get it, maybe two weeks, 135%. That's not a bad swing time. Yeah, and, I, and it, again, it's never an exact science, but I can't help but feel this whole structure uh, looks a little accumulation-ish to me. I, I, I feel like there's something going on in the background here mm -hmm. uh, and, and people are starting to, to uh, look at this asset again as a particular means of, uh, of finding profits. One thing I do want to highlight, if we go to Unimoku, which is our custom Uni, uh, Ichimoku um, tool, which uh, gives you all the different uh, signals on when things are, you know, Kumo twists, everything as well. This is looking at the standard setting. So we can see the resistance there within the cloud. If we go to our crypto settings, which is our 2060 settings, which you can change on the fly, and we'll change it to uh, the, if we just go back to the settings, bro, and just put it to same as, um, I bet, yep. Yeah. So this is one thing that I spoke to ads about beforehand. One thing that's really, really common when we get these edge to edge trades, which is uh, an edge to edge is when we've pierced the cloud uh, and then we look for the top of the cloud as a level of resistance, which we can clearly see here. The 27 extension lines up perfectly with that cloud resistance there as well. We had a breakthrough within and this wick was was kind of indicative to be honest. I, I thought once we we had that that buy up and then that sell off, I thought this would be the next logical sort of level. And we had a, a bit of a retest of this cloud. Uh, and this is why using something like the Fibonacci is such a great little tool in conjunction with your your Kijin and your Tenken, which are your sort of they're not, but let's call them like your MA lines for Ichimoku, using them as levels of support. Or when we do have a retracement, you could look at potentially picking some up off these levels and waiting for the next run up towards the top of the cloud. But whether that happens or not, we can see the significance of the, the cloud resistance, the next level cloud resistance, along with this uh, this pretty significant supply zone up here that we've now hit and breached pretty, uh, pretty convincingly. So I'm in the same boat as ads. I'm still in an XRP position here. This is the, the first trade I've taken on XRP in a very long time. But when you look at what Steamroller, what your oscillators, what Unicon is telling you, you get that confirmation of your bias that, hey, this is looking pretty bullish, regardless of the SEC fight and everything that's happening at the moment. Uh, this is well worth a trade. And I think a lot of people, um, I know they have because I've been seeing it on Facebook. A lot of people are still bashing XRP. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, 
you guys can bash XRP and do what you want to do, but I'm going to buy it and make some money while you're all bashing it, not paying any attention to it. So I think that when there is significant FUD like this around a particular coin, and I'll say this on the record, you've got to consider the type of company that Ripple are, the amount of money behind that. Brad Garlinghouse is a pretty smart guy, depend, you know, regardless of what people say. They've got a lot of power to be able to fight this and, and work with regulators or do things in the right sort of way. They're not a shit kicker company that are a backyarder um, group. This, this is a significant company. So regardless of what the SEC is saying, don't don't write Ripple off just yet. Let them take the time to work with regulators in the SEC to find out what actually needs to happen. Yes, trading is being suspended on a lot of these other platforms, um, but you know, just, just be cautious of what's happening. Grayscale actually did their biggest purchase of, uh, of Ripple on the 1st of January, collecting, I think it was almost 13 million Ripple. I'd heard that they'd since sold that. I don't know whether that's particularly correct. No, that was FUD, I'm pretty sure. Because, that was FUD? Because the other, because not long after, like about like 12 hours later, they yeah. had posted on Twitter, uh, about the, the holdings that they had, they still had their XRP holdings uh on file yeah so the fud just... was basically uh as far as i understand that they had sold their entire position of xrp that was the the article that i read <clears throat> but not only 12 9 12 hours later they had released their um their holding statement and xp was still there so yeah it was literally I... just fud and it, the price didn't react to it anyway yeah I'm not sure what's going on at the moment. I think you probably have to check the Grayscale uh, Twitter for the latest on that or the, the website to see what's going on. But, um, you know, when institutions and big guys like that are, are still making purchases regardless of what's going on, you know, mm. like Wyckoff said uh, in his composite man theory, think about this market as if a single entity were controlling it. And at this point, Grayscale is, is the biggest player in this particular space from an invest in, uh, in institutional sort of area. So why not think like institutions and trade like institutions and see what the institutions are doing? So yeah, I'm, I'm very much in XRP and I'm feeling good about it. That wick there, you could potentially see that as a little bit of a, a double or a triple bottom from there. We're making this sort of W pattern now as well, in my opinion, break this neckline and, uh, and we're on. On. so let's continue to see what happens with xrp yeah i'm pretty excited to see what happens over the next little bit in terms of their ssc uh, investigation in terms of the price action because like i said in the video this week if i just get rid of the itchy for a second these sort of you know swan events we're coming down to 65 to 20 cents that is a fantastic buying opportunity that is a it's 50 percent dump let's measure it 75% dump, there you go. So it's lost 75% of its value. It's proven it can do it. So it is a fantastic buying opportunity in my opinion. Yeah, not financial advice. But yesterday, uh, Brad Garlinghouse did a, a bit of an AMA or answered some questions about the SEC lawsuit. So they're being very transparent about it. And there was a, a, an article that came out that I'm just reading here at coindesk.com at the moment where it says, uh, Ripple did try to settle charges of conducting unregistered securities transactions with the SEC before the regulators sued it in December. So that was part of his AMA. He said, uh, I can't get into specifics, but no, we tried and we'll continue to try with the new administration to resolve this. He said... Uh, the SEC alleged that Ripple, Garlinghouse and former CEO and current chairman Chris Larson has sold $1.3 billion worth of XRP in unregistered security sales since 2013 in an ongoing violation of the law. When you consider the uh, $1.3 billion, that's a lot of money, but you know, Ripple have, have got a lot of money. So they will throw everything they can at this to get this resolved. Uh, so definitely keep keep watching XRP, in my opinion. This is uh, it could be... As Ad said, a, 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 a handsome purchasing opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll keep it like that. I'll keep it like that. Don't, you, you buy what you want to buy. Uh, but that's that's just what we're doing. And we're going to be a little bit more transparent on these more casual sessions about what we're doing. Um, I am in XRP. All right. Um, another one that uh, I, I got... I got pretty lucky on on this one. The other day when I sold out of XRP a little bit, um, 
when I say XRP, I sold out a position of my XRP. I bought it back up pretty swiftly, to be honest with you. I lost a little bit of money, but I've made it up since. What saved me was LTC. And when we do look at LTC, this is going to segue into another little bit of education that we're going to share with you on dollar cost averaging strategies. I got a, I've been in X, uh, in Litecoin since, uh, since 120 seven dollars i think it was 128 dollars i've been in uh in litecoin accumulating at that sort of current level um coming back up towards that that top supply zone i had taken profit along the way and was a little bit down um in terms of what what level i had had beforehand because i was taking profit but what i had done with my dollar cost averaging strategy i had a buy at 150 and 11 cents uh, which got hit overnight and kind of saved me from that that little bit of a, a muck up that I made with XRP. So let's have a look at LTC. And then what we're going to dive into is uh, very quickly just give you a little bit of information on what's called a dollar cost averaging strategy, uh, which is a great way to bring your average entry price on an asset down or to help you pick up, um, you know, good prices when we have these weeks to the downside. So LTC in general, there we go. We're looking at this level of supply being tested multiple times now. And of course, you can only bend a stick so far before it breaks. I've said that one before. I uh, should get some new material, I reckon. But um, if we're looking at this level here, it looks like if we do push it again, we're going to have some more significant uh, price action at that point. What I mean by that is if we do push it again, if we come up to here, we might have some closes inside that level or push through it in uh, entirely so it, it, like i said you can't uh continuously expect a level to be held forever it will continuously come up and retest that level until it breaks it you, you can only bend a stick so far before it breaks that's pretty much the analogy that i'm going to stick by because that's the perfect way to describe it uh that level there let's go to let's go a little bit further back to see where we drew that level in um, and that was drawn on the four hour time frame so what day was that that was the 6th of may 18, I believe it was, May. Sixth. Oh, that didn't work, oh, there we go. Yeah, okay. Um, anyway, looking at that significant pivot point, that area was a little bit better on the four hour time frame than it was the daily, that's why I did uh, leave it on the four hour and you can see why I did that. Uh, that level is a significant pivot point. It, it's really, uh, it can be drawn a couple of ways here, but I've drawn it with the bottom of the body and of course the top of that wick there to give me, to give me a decent zone there, or a decent area to work with. And if we come back, we are seeing the the benefits of that. Uh, so it's, 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 it's funny, S&D, if you haven't used supply and demand, you can find some of the resources to learn how to draw it on our website or in our Discord. But if you're not using this, you need to, because I'm looking at price action from 2018, drew one rectangular box, and we are seeing a, uh, a reaction to that uh, nearly two years later, uh, th nearly three years later, excuse me, uh, over two years later. So uh, it is something to look for, and it, it does come from like a stock and Forex background. It does work pretty much on every, uh, on every asset class, I guess, you could probably chart. So it is something decent to learn. However, if we're looking at uh, uh, Litecoin in terms of where it's going, uh, I left the Fibonacci levels in. The 618 is the most uh, prestigious one, I guess, if we're talking about Fibonacci in general. And we've been holding this level, and of course we've tested it again during this candle, this four hour candle, which is due to close in 13 minutes. So if we do get that close above, I probably would expect it to come up and retest this level, which is about 178 to $180 tie, I think that is a valid, uh, that's a valid assumption uh, to me. Yeah, yep. I'm uh, I, I'm personally very very bullish on on Litecoin um, as I was with Ethereum last year. Litecoin is uh, is is in my opinion the next one that's due to see the lion's share of uh, of equity if we continue with the way that we're continuing at the moment. Uh, not to harp on it again, but Grayscale are buying LTC quite heavily at the moment, along with Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. So again, we're looking at what institutions are doing. Are they buying Litecoin with the anticipation of it dropping to a hundred bucks or dropping it, you know, it, it crashing. Well, no, they're not. They want to make money, not, not lose money. So, Litecoin uh, is a, 
a pretty long-term investment for me personally. I'm, I'm pretty happy with what I've uh, managed to accumulate down a little bit lower. Unfortunately, I, I didn't accumulate it anywhere near as low as what I wanted to. But yeah, for me, I'll continue to trading this on the short-term timeframes with, uh, with short-term or mid-term swings, but definitely have an allocation long-term to hold for the remainder of this year because I see good things for Litecoin in the future. Charlie Lee's a very, very smart guy as well and, um, and, and very cluey when it comes to this market and, and the, the technology behind Litecoin. So looking at this, yeah, Gravy Train again, giving us the signal. We've had a green cloud. Uh, Unicon also as well on the daily timeframe has just been stupid on this. Uh, it's given us pretty much every buy and sell opportunity you could ever need uh, using just that that uh, that particular thing alone. So yeah, Litecoin, very bullish, feeling very good about it. All right, what we should do is uh, we'll use this opportunity if we can go to a, a clean Litecoin chart. Uh, if we want to look at something, or if we just go to LTC USD, we're going to talk about a, a dollar cost averaging strategy. Uh, this will be quick, but this could be a very powerful little piece of information that you might like to take on board uh, for when you are looking when you know maybe you got into a position and you bought a little bit too high up maybe you bought it at 172 bucks and we tanked or you bought it uh, at 110 and we tanked back down towards 90 90 dollars or whatever it is dollar cost averaging is a strategy where you layer buys to help bring your average buy price of an asset down. So if you purely just bought 10 Litecoin at 172 bucks and you held it, you hodled for ages, hoping that the price would, uh, would continue upwards, but we continue back down and we head down towards 160, 130, 140, whatever it is, the, the, the premise behind dollar cost averaging is to layer in buys of an asset at lower prices to help bring your price down. So if you did it at 172 and you've got 10 Litecoin at 172, you bought at 172. But if you layered some buys down, maybe you had 10 LTC to, to consider, you might have bought three at 172, you might have bought three at 160, you might have bought three at, uh, at 150 and one at 145 or something like that. And what that will do is that will help bring your average price down to that 160 area or that 165 area rather than being at 172 where you've got your whole stack that you've purchased. So uh, let's look at some tools to help us identify where some um, some you know potential entries could be if you were looking. Say for example, if you bought at that 140 uh, level up up here and that was your, your initial buy-in price ads. The first area that really um, comes to me and I'll draw some of these in and of course, they're going to be broken and stuff now. So let's actually, let's go back to, let's go back to here. So we don't get that, uh, don't get the answers. So we've got the first swing level there roughly. And then of course, the, the area that you really want to buy is going to be around this area. This is a daily time frame, mind you. So the swing is going to be pretty big. Uh, and of course, we've got the one down below here. So it would, it would be in your best interests to really try and aim for the lower, higher quality level. So the highest quality level in terms of a supply or a demand is where we've got an untested region, of course, which is gonna be around here if we're looking at this chart in particular, but the one that's gonna be on the most significant pivot point. So the most significant pivot point for LTC is down here at 25 bucks. Whether, we, whether or not we get the hit on that level is another thing but it would always be in your interest to you know really find some levels on the way down regardless if, if it goes down or not further uh, so let's just find these levels and we'll see where we could potentially find uh, some entries into LTC so if we start this let's go over let's just uh, speed it up a little bit more so there you go you got your first entry here of course it moved down that's fine just we'll just wait for this of course come back down there we go We've, we've hit the second one that's gone now. We're, now, remember, as we're looking at these levels, if we get a breakthrough, we automatically delete that level and we look for the next one. If we fall in three, we delete the level, we look for the next one. So we've hit the next one now. Keep, keep going, we'll see what happens. So we've gone through that level now. We'll see if we get a hit further down. I'm not sure if we do from memory. Oh yes, we do, there we go. So, circling back to the start, like I said, the most significant pivot point is going to be the highest quality level down here. If you bought at 140 bucks and you're familiar with supply and demand, you'd be looking for the highest quality pivot point. 
okay? Which is $25 down here. There you go, there's your hit straight away. So what you've done is you've had a buy at 140 and you've said, okay, the most, I'm happy to hold this. The most high, the highest quality level is gonna be at 25 bucks. So I'm gonna dollar cost average at 25. So automatically you've bought your buy price well below 100 bucks now. So if you're buying at the highest quality zone, let's get rid of these for example, okay? You've got your buy at 25, let's say you even bought at 27, it doesn't matter. And you're looking to, to sell at 60 bucks to get your money back, all right? So you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting, and we all know what happens next, it does get to 60 bucks, it gets to 100 bucks, we're over 100 bucks now. So there you go, you've gotten your money back. Um, the whole idea is to look, zoom, zoom out, look at a daily time frame, identify the major pivot point on this daily time frame because the major pivot point, the highest quality level of demand is always going to be a magnet for price action. The only thing that it requires from you is patience. So you need to be as patient as possible to be able to take advantage of a buying opportunity like that. We had three or four levels on the way down. Do you wanna buy on those levels? That's up to you. Uh, you're gonna to have to be paying attention, you counter trend trading, of course, it's, that's the whole spiel, we all know how it goes. But the, most, the highest quality level is gonna be at the most significant pivot point, and that's where your dollar cost averaging should take place if you take an approach like this, Ty. For sure, and if you're not familiar with supply and demand, unitytradinggroup.com uh, forward slash supply and demand. There's uh, another way that this can be done. And, and just because we're looking at the daily time frame, we're giving you extreme examples here. You can apply this to any time frame. It doesn't matter whether it's the daily time frame or the four hour or the 12 hour. Um, we're talking about this from a swing trading perspective and we're talking about the biggest return for buck when you are buying at these lower levels. So if you're a scalper or a day trader, it's probably not the, the best idea. But uh, you can also use the Fibonacci tool as well as, which is, uh, you know, a, a, a simpler uh, reference, I suppose, if you're looking for particular levels beforehand, we spoke about the significance of the 50 and the 61, etc. If you're using the FIB extension tool or you're using the Fibonacci retracement tool, for example, you can look at these significant levels. If you bought up here at 140 or whatever it was, 140, you can look at, all right, we know that the, the 78 uh, the 50 and the 61 play significance or the 38 play significance. We know the 1272 and the 168 play significance, you know, that's 90 to 70 bucks there. That's a $20 difference, which is pretty decent when you're considering the price was only 140 at the time. So look for those significant levels and, mm -hmm. uh, and you might like to, to layer in buys there to help bring your average cost down as well. And you, if you then take that even further and then line that up with your levels of supply and demand, that gives you again, that confirmation bias that that is a significant level where price might deviate to where you could look to layer in some additional buys ads. Yeah, absolutely. And we know we know what happens with LTC. If I get rid of the, the chart, we know the eventuality of something like this. So if there's always ways around uh, unfortunate you know, events or panic buys or, you know, stuff like that. There's always ways to do it. And, you know, you can always do washing as well. You can wash away your, your, your debt or your, uh, your bad buy. So as Ty said, if you had a, uh, a bag of 10 LTC and you bought up here, you can, you know, get rid of the 10, you can tra transfer five to a cold wallet and then you can use five. So you can dollar cost average the five. So it doesn't, cost as much or doesn't take as much money the dollar cost average five of them as it would ten of them and you can do it that way so you can slowly wash away your uh, your bad buy or your bad entry and of course it doesn't take as much money you can do one at a time so for example if you were to be doing if you had ten and you would you transferred nine away and you just had one in the account or you've got one now at 140 bucks so if you did make the buy at the 1618, you could more than likely get your money back by the time we got back to the, the one. And then that one is now gone. Now you've got nine to deal with instead of 10. There's always ways around that.
Totally. And that's a, a really powerful strategy, particularly for those people who have been holding since 2017 or who are in a bad in a bad spot at the moment if you bought on FOMO. So it's always a good idea not to you know look at, at dropping 100% of your position if you're freaking out because you bought it high. If you think the price of the asset is going to continue up, again, you would use your tools like your Fibonacci or use your moving averages, Unicon, whatever it is that you're using. Uh, if, if things are dropping by 10, 20, 30 bucks and you bought at 140, but you're considering the fact that LT may return to those prices or may continue up in an uptrend. This can apply to the four hour time frame as well. It's a really good strategy to uh, to help bring that buy price down and to accumulate at lower prices as well. And that's why it's a great idea to not always be 100% in a particular coin or 100% in a particular asset. If you're 100% in BTC, you've got to then obviously sell out of BTC. BTC could be continuing to move up and then you're selling out of a position that um, that is you know in looking at, at decent profits. So that's why it's nice to have a little bit of reserve of USD on the side or a little bit of BTC on the side if you're, you're buying BTC pairs to be able to save yourself in these situations where you've uh, made a bit of a boo-boo. And it's always good to, to bring in some indicators to really uh, help you along that, that, that journey, I guess. So if you bought, you're buying at this level, this is a hypothetical, if you're buying 140, you can always use those Fibonacci levels, use those supply and demand levels in accordance to something like a swing trading uh, asset like Steamroller where you can find those swing trading targets and you can expect those movements to the upside to take advantage of you know that movement back to the upside for a sell and of course it it remains valid the entire way down so you've got that to look forward to so there's always ways you can do it you can increase your likelihood of a decent outcome 100 percent well I don't know. We've uh, we've been doing this for an hour now. Is this a good place to to wrap up the first episode of the UTG show, or is there anything else that we want to have a look at? Um, there's nothing much I wanted to have a look at in terms of the charts. Uh, we've spoken about grayscale. We've spoken about some of the news. Spoken about XRP. Is there any more questions that anyone had uh, before we wrap this up? Uh, of course, I'm looking at the the Discord general at the moment. If there's any questions, shoot them through now. Of course, it's, I think we're about. 10 or 15 seconds delayed so we'll have to wait just a touch for, for people to respond but um we'll see yeah well thank you for everyone for uh for joining us this has been a lot of fun it's good to do this and uh, a little bit more casually and not have to uh have too much of a of a structure of course if you guys want to know more things about what we're doing of course hit that subscribe button uh but also inside the discord too you know ping us we're going to do this once a month i think ads i think we'll do this every yeah, uh so. Once a month, we'll do it every every uh, time around this one. So if we go, we'll probably do this uh, on the what's that? The sixth of next month, I think. If we do it on a Saturday or a Sunday, yeah. so let us know. Put uh, your suggestions or your comments inside Discord and let us know the topics you might want to cover. We're always going to drop you know some knowledge bombs and a few things and show you how we're trading that we don't share as much on the uh, the Tuesday and Thursday night things. But um, Without further ado, I think that uh, that might wrap it up. We don't have any questions coming through. Absolutely, bro. Thank you all for joining us. This has been a really, really good first episode, I think. And uh, I'm keen to do the next one. For sure. All right. Enjoy this uh, beautiful Melbourne day if you're in Melbourne or wherever you are. It's a, a stunner. So get out and enjoy it. Get off the screens. Yep. Perfect. All right. See you later, guys. Catches. Bye.